exoduses, migrations, conquests. Those three words, exoduses, migrations, conquests, sum up the story of Eastern Europe in the 6th century after Christ. Violently shaking the kaleidoscope of history, new racial groups made their appearance on the European stage. Wave after wave, hordes of nomadic barbarians from the steppes of Asia overran the eastern territories of Europe. In the course of their relentless westward advance, they encountered the Slavs. At that time, the Slavs inhabited an area stretching from the Carpathian Mountains to the Baltic Sea, more or less corresponding to present-day Western Russia. The Slavs had to give up their territory to the tribes of Asian nomads, and they spread out over lands that altogether were five times vaster than their original homeland. Barbarians from the east kept on wandering in search of new lands, but the Slavs settled down in the regions they conquered. These new territories varied considerably, both in the influence exerted by neighboring cultures and in climate. And so each of the Slavic groups developed individual characteristics. The distinctions that came into existence were not so much a question of race or language. They concerned the way of life and type of activity. The tribes with a peasant type origin started farming. And colonized zones that were practically virgin. The Slavs of the steppes, on the other hand, were semi-nomadic horsemen. And they preferred herding and livestock rearing. Other groups, the ones that eventually took the names of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs, spread across the Balkan Peninsula. They reached as far as the Adriatic Sea. That was where the first contacts and clashes began between the Slavs and the Latin world. To the north, after crossing the Carpathian Mountains and occupying the territories where the Poles, Czechs and Slovaks still live, the Slavs encountered the Germanic world. For centuries, this was to be a relationship fraught with tension. In the Balkans, the southern Slavs were deeply influenced and molded by Byzantium, capital of the Roman Empire of the East. The destinies of the Slavic tribes at the end of the mass migrations were then very different. Of that far-off time of adventurous shiftings of entire peoples, very few traces are left. But we discovered one of them on the eastern border of present-day Hungary. It's the grave of a Slavic horseman buried with his mount. Proof of how important horses were to the Slavs in conquering new lands. Elsewhere, for example in the heart of the Carpathian Mountains in Romania, those remote times are recalled not by archaeological remains, but by traditional customs. The method of communicating from one mountain to another with these immense trumpets is extremely old. A 
Originally, they were used to warn of the arrival of Slavic invaders. Ever since then, Romania has remained an island in the midst of one of the most extensive seas of humanity to be found on this planet. The invisible ocean that is the land of the Slavs.